Hi, everybody. Welcome. Today's class is going to focus on right effort. And so this is the perfect balance between um, our effort and our ease. Sometimes there's, we're too relaxed. We're not doing enough. That's pretty rare, though. <laughs> Usually we fall at the other end of the spectrum. We're doing too much. This creates tension, right? And it wastes our most precious resource. It wastes our energy. And so today we'll play with finding that middle ground, which usually involves relaxing a lot. And it should help us um, feel really present and hold on to our precious energy. You'll need two blankets and two blocks. Um, the blankets aren't until the very end for um, our restorative poses, and the blocks can be off to the right-hand side um, for when we get up to standing. With that, we can begin. So take a quarter turn to your right, and very gently start to find your way to the floor, but let this be part of the practice, right? So you're slowly lowering, making sure everything feels supported and there's no tension as you do this and then stack the hands let the elbows come wide and bring your forehead to your hands and lately I've been really enjoying actually bringing my hands forward and bringing my forehead to my mat but it will depend on your arms your neck your shoulders so you can try both and see what's most comfortable and if this isn't comfortable feel free to use a blanket to help prop the body up a little bit more and then once you've experimented a little bit and you've found what is as supportive as possible start to relax and see if you can tune into your breath flow. And when we're on our belly, we have a lot of feedback from the mat as we breathe. So you might notice the sensation of the lungs expanding and especially the belly expanding and pushing into the mat. And Remember, you don't have to increase this. You can just observe. A big part of finding our right effort is not increasing our breath capacity with our will. It's funny that the phrase is take a breath because Really, the goal is to be open enough to create space for the reception of the breath. See if you can walk that line where you're not taking, you're not reaching out, you're opening up so gently and then the breath naturally comes in. And believe it or not, we're not just taking a nap here. This actually starts to wake up core muscles and as core muscles wake up especially in breathing the neck and shoulders can often relax so perhaps now you have a little bit more space to walk the elbows a little bit wider tuck the chin a little bit which means making a double chin and lengthening through the back of the neck as if the crown of the head was being pulled forward slightly and we'll just take a few more breaths like this to connect with the natural flow of the breath without changing anything though I'll give you permission to lengthen your exhale Take your next couple of breaths just to notice the back of the body. A lot of times the breath doesn't travel into the back area of the ribs. 
And so see if you can awaken a little more awareness on this almost invisible part of our breath. Visualize the ribs expanding. If you're following along with the playlist, you can hit play on the first track and make sure it's set to loop. And then gently extend one arm at a time. Keep the forehead down and notice the sense of length up from the feet to the hip, hip to armpit, and then armpit to fingertip. And take a couple of breaths to visualize the sides of the body lengthening, almost like railroad tracks reaching infinitely in both directions. And then start to push down just with the top of the right foot. And you don't want to, you don't want this to be intense, but as you Everything okay, Bob? Can you hear me? Yeah, I was just trying to see what you were doing. Okay. I'm just kicking my foot into the ground. Okay. okay. <laughs> so just gently kick the right foot into the ground and notice how the kneecap gently lifts away from the floor. You might even feel the front of the thigh gently engage and then release that and take a couple of pulses with the right foot gently kicking. You might start to feel the back of the hip engage and maybe that sensation even travels all the way up to the core. And then switch legs. Try now with the left foot gently kicking and releasing and again we don't want to overdo it here we're not creating any strain we're just starting to wake up the muscles in the foot in the ankle in the calf thigh hip and low back so a gentle kick a gentle release from the outside eye nothing really moves so um, as bob was looking at me he was probably like what is going on here these are invisible movements they're like secret movements just for you but hopefully you can feel something happening and then we'll do the same thing with the arm so let's start with the right arm tent the right fingertips without moving the right arm just gently push down into the fingertips into the arm and see if you can feel a little awakening in the arm traveling back to the shoulder and then release do this a couple of times. You'd never want any strain. It's almost like um, inflating a tire. It's just this like gentle increase in support and pressure from the inside out. Try the left arm now. It's okay if the elbow gently reaches away as you push into the fingertips. And now start to kick down with the right foot once again, just like you did before. But this time as you release, gently lift the right foot, bend the knee, and hover the head. And then kick down with the right foot again. And take a couple of these pulses where you kick down, and then you bend the knee and gently Lift the foot so the thigh will lift as well. The next time the foot lifts, pause there. Drag the hands back. Let the heart reach forward and play with hovering the hands and gently C curving the spine to the left. And then reach everything out, kick the foot down, and release down to where you came from. And we'll pulse between those two shapes. So with your 
Next, ex exhale, bend the right knee. Kick the right foot up gently. Drag the hands back, C curve to the left. And then exhale, reach everything out and set it down. Take a few pulses like this on your own, starting to wake up the back of the body. You really don't want to feel any tension in the low back as you do this. Um, so less is more. That's our theme. And the next time you release back down, drag the left hand back, push into the left hand so you gently roll onto the right side of the body. Let the right side of the body soften and roll forward just an inch and then back just an inch, massaging through the right side of the body. Observe the breath. Let the breath soften you from the inside out and let the massage soften you from the outside in. And then pause at center. Start to reach the right arm forward and overhead towards that corner of the mat that's just ahead of you. And then kick the top leg back behind you. And try to feel how the right arm reaching, sorry, the left arm reaching forward allows you to kick the left leg back without rolling backwards. It creates like a counter tension. And just play with that for a moment. Notice the muscles that are engaging. Take a couple of breaths. And then gently roll back to where you came from on the belly. Pause at center. You can stack the hands like we did at the beginning and notice any sensations in the left arm, the left shoulder, all the way down the left side of the body. And then we'll do that same sequence on the second side. So reach the arms forward. Start by kicking the left foot down and feeling that gentle inflation or engagement. And then bend the left knee so the sole of the foot is towards the sky. And gently start to Lift the sole of the foot up just a couple of inches, letting the front of the thigh reach away from the ground and then set it down, kick it out. The next time the knee bends, you can start to glide the hands back, reach the heart forward into a gentle back bend, keep the low back nice and soft, and then hover the hands and slowly curve the spine towards the right, gaze over the right shoulder, see if you can see the left foot, and then kick the foot back, reach the arms forward, and rest everything back down. And we'll play between those two shapes. So. Bend the left knee, drag the hands back, C curve to the right. And then exhale, set everything down, reach everything out. Take a couple more on your own. Try to feel how the body is connected here, how the leg connects to the core, how the arm connects to the core, and they're working in unison to help you lift. The next time you reach everything out, Slowly draw the right hand underneath the right shoulder and push into the right hand to roll onto the left side. Make your gentle rocks and rolls forward and back, massaging out the left side of the body now. And if anything feels tense or tight here, give yourself permission to make adjustments, maybe bend the knees or reach the bottom arm at a different angle. Our goal is to relax the nervous system. And when we relax the nervous system, that's where the magic happens. The physical body resets the mind, relaxes. We're able to feel our deeper levels of consciousness. And so if there's a tightness, if there's a pain, the nervous system can't relax. So we really want to find this really 
gentle, sweet space to work in. And start to reach the right arm forward and up so it points to that corner of the mat that's overhead in front of you. And then start to reach the right leg back. So there's a long diagonal from right hand to right foot. As the right leg reaches back, notice how it almost wants to roll you back onto your back. So reach a little bit more with the right hand and feel that whole right side lengthen. Take a breath. Visualize the connection from the hand all the way down to the foot. And then slowly roll back onto the belly and we'll go side to side for a moment. So push into now the left hand. Let the left leg reach back into that side lying diagonal. So you're on the right side and the left hand and foot are stretching apart. And then you'll roll onto your belly, push into the right hand and let the right leg kick back. So we'll just go side to side a couple more times on our own. Move slow, slowly, and try to feel how that top arm and that top leg are connected. And it's not about stretching. It's not about reaching the top leg back as far as you can. It's really about feeling what they have in common and how they help you find balance. And take one more to each side. You can always use your top hand for a little extra help. And then roll onto the belly where you came from. Drag the hands back underneath the shoulders. Look down, take your breath in. And as you exhale, push down into the hands and send the hips up and all the way back to Bhaktasana, to devotional pose. Let the hips melt towards the heels. Gently rock from side to side. Let the elbows be soft so the shoulders get a little break. You can even draw a big circle around the body with the hands. Reach the hands towards the feet. Bring the backs of the hands to the mat. Soften the elbows, soften the shoulders. Take a couple of breaths. And then slow motion, push down into the shin. So the shins push down into the earth. And notice how the rest of the body gets a little lighter, like it wants to start hovering away from the legs. Keep pushing the shins down. Notice your inhale. And as you exhale, slowly start to roll up one vertebra at a time. If it doesn't feel good on the spine, push your hands into your thighs for a little extra support. There shouldn't be any pain here. Give yourself that support. We'll meet seated on the heels and then we'll float all the way up to standing on the knees and gently reach the hands back, letting the chest open. And then reach the hands forward as the hips hinge back, almost like a chair pose. Push down into the knees, float back up, hands back. And then with your next exhale, hinge the hips, reach the hands forward. Take a couple of pulses here, just getting used to having legs underneath you, starting to feel support from the ground up. Give yourself permission to walk the knees a little bit wider underneath the hips so they feel more supportive. And the next time you hinge in your mini chair pose, release the hands down to the mat into tabletop. And then one wrist at a time at first, come on to the fingertips, letting the wrist lift away from the floor and then set that wrist down and do the same thing on the other side. And we'll go side to side like this for a while and start to notice how the wrist lifting is actually coming from the shoulder and the core. It's like the arm isn't doing much work, right? You're almost unweighting the wrist with the rest of the body. Can you guys feel that happening? Yes, nice. Great. So take a couple more of those and then 
Start to notice when the wrist comes back down and see if you can keep that sense of weightlessness in the wrist even as it connects to the floor. And what we're doing here is we're allowing the rest of the body to support the hand and the wrist so those muscles don't get tight and tense. Let the hands be really, really soft. Let there be a little extra weight on the pinky. And allow the middle three knuckles of the palm to not have any contact with the mat. So the hands are really, really soft. And then pause for a moment at center. Close the eyes and and just notice any sense of support and connection from the arms into the core. Lower the elbows down underneath the shoulders just to give the wrists a little break now. The forearms will be like the number 11. And actually, yeah. And then start to make some little circles around the elbows. And notice as the weight shifts, how there's different sensation in the shoulders. You might feel muscles in the chest, muscles deep in the shoulder, muscles underneath the shoulder blade. Circle the other way. Make sure you're breathing. And if you notice you're making big circles or fast circles or you're trying to find a stretch, remember that goal of right effort, right? We want to find the place where our body is supporting us without wasting any unnecessary energy, right? Less is more. As long as you're supported, you're using the right amount of effort. And now slowly bring one hand at a time underneath you and Pause again in tabletop. If your knees are feeling sensitive from kneeling for all this time, you can bring a blanket underneath the knees. We'll do um, one of my favorite exercises to wake up the core, and it's really, really gentle. So there shouldn't be any sense of exertion here. Inhale, and with your next exhale, slide the, the top of the right foot straight back, keeping contact with the floor and then inhale, bring it back in. And do a couple more of these and try to feel how the core or your center supports you as the leg slides back and try to keep everything else from moving. So the hips don't move, the spine doesn't move, just that right leg slides back. And then pause the next time the right leg is back, tuck the right toes under, shift some weight into the right hand, and then circle the left arm forward, up, and back for a gentle twist. And then place the left hand down, tuck the left toes under, hover the left knee, and push into the hands for a down dog prep pose. So the left leg slightly in front of the right, and then we'll do that again. So set the left knee down. Bring the right knee into tabletop. Next exhale, slide the right foot back. Shift the weight into the right hand. And then inhale, big circle. The left arm up and back, twisting into that left hip. Left hand plants. Push into the hands, unweight the knee, and lift the hips up and back any amount that feels good. And we'll do that one more time. You can go at your own pace if you'd like to or stay with me. Bring the right knee in. Next exhale, the right foot slides back. Next inhale, circle the left arm forward, up and back. And then plant the hand down. Push into the hands till you can lift the left knee and then send the hips up and back for our staggered down dog. Lower the left knee, bring the right knee in and gently melt the hips to the heels 
So we can take a little break before we do the second side. Turn the palms face up, melt the forehead down, and start to roll weight on the wrist so that the palms flip down and the weight transfers to the thumb side of the wrist. And then the weight transfers back to the pinky side of the wrist and the palms come up again. And do this a couple of times, massaging out the wrist. And then as effortlessly as possible, float up to table. And we'll do that same thing on the second side. So now the left foot gently slides back. Nothing else in the body moves. And then bring it in. Do that a few times on your own, moving the leg on the exhale. And try to feel a sense of stabilization in the right hip. You might notice the deep core muscles turning on. The next time the leg extends, tuck the left toes under, shift the weight into the left hand, right arm reaches forward and then starts to circle up and back. So the heart points away from me. Mm. And then complete the circle, bring the right hand down, tuck the right toes under, push into the hands so that the hips Lift up and back, lengthening through the back of the legs. And then slowly release down, bring the left knee in, and we repeat. So left leg slides, right arm circles, right arm plants, and then the hands push to gently lift. Nice. One more on your own. If you love one of these movements, feel free to just stay in that one part of the movement and repeat it. Starts with the leg slide and then goes to the arm circle. Nice. And then ends with the staggered down dog. Lower the right knee. Keep the left leg back. Pause in this half plank. Notice how your shoulder, your hands are right underneath your shoulders and there's a straight line from the left heel all the way up the spine to the crown of the head. After your next inhale, exhale to hover the right knee and find how little effort you can use in plank and then set the right knee down. Do this a few times, inhaling to prepare, exhaling to hover for our right effort plank pose. And the next time everything hovers, slide the right foot back, pause in a full plank. If that's too much, lower the knees. Make sure you're breathing smoothly. And then flatten the feet, send the hips to the heels, take one last bhaktasana, releasing through the hands, the wrists, the shoulders. Push into one shin at a time, and as you push into the shin, notice how the body starts to sway away from that shin. Push into the other shin, sway the other way, and give yourself a little gentle swaying massage. And then heavy hips come on to fingertips. Start to walk the fingertips in, rolling up one vertebra at a time. And then floating into a high kneel. We're slowly making our way to standing. You can step one leg forward. Bring your hands to that leg, almost like you're going to get out of a pool. Like Start to interlace the hands, push down into the hands and hover the back knee. Step the back foot forward and place the hands on the thighs. Nice, great job. Inhale and with your next exhale, melt the body over the thighs. Bend the knees really, really deeply so there's no strain. The hands might be resting on the thighs, they might come down to the shins, feet or floor. Sway the hips from side to side. 
and then bend the knees really, really deeply. Let the hips come towards the heels and slowly roll up one vertebra at a time. Option to push the hands into the thighs for a little extra help here. And then pause for a moment at the top. Notice the weight in your feet. Notice any sense of support from the back of the body, lightness through your joints. Take a couple of breaths. And with your next inhale, start to sweep the arms forward and up effortlessly, no strain in the shoulders. Exhale, start to bend the knees, reach the hips back, hinging gently at the hips. And then with an inhale, let the whole back of the body Lengthen from the soles of the feet, up the calves, up the hamstrings, up the back body, releasing forward to the shape we were just in. And then as you exhale, bend the knees, hips come towards the heels, but not very much, just like a little spring in the legs. And then slow exhale to roll back up, just like we did. Always have the option to use the hands. You wanna make sure there's no pain or discomfort or fear in that movement. Inhale, the arms float up. Exhale, reach the hips back. A gentle chair with a neutral spine. Inhale, the back of the body lengthens so that the pelvis can spill forward. And then exhale, rolls you up. We'll do this one more time. Take your time. Move at your own pace or you can stay with me. Inhales, floats the arms. Exhale, reaches the hips back effortlessly. Inhale, lengthens the whole back line of the body. And then the slow exhale rolls you up. That felt so good, I actually wanna do it one more time. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to lie, but this is so therapeutic and I think a lot of us um, benefit from it. So one last one for real this time. The inhale floats the arms. Exhale, chair. Inhale, lengthen, pouring forward effortlessly. And exhale, slow roll up. And maybe it's even a couple exhales. You really don't need to rush this movement. Just make sure the back feels safe. And then when you land at the top, you can pause and gently start to bounce. And imagine your body is jello, right? And you, you want this sense of like everything sort of jiggling in these full units. So you feel it in your feet and your legs and your back and your neck and whole body. Nothing is left out here. And then as long as the joints feel okay, um, you can increase like the <laughs> intensity of the jiggle with a little faster bounces with a little more force as you push the feet into the floor. And imagine tension just rolling out of the body physical but also energetic and then let the bounces get smaller and smaller and slower and slower and gentler and gentler until you end with the knees just gently bent and rock the weight forward in the feet rock the weight back and then gently press evenly into the feet. Let the legs lengthen and pause at standing. If you're following along with the playlist, you can go to the next track. If you'd like to grab a sip of water, you can. And we will need our blocks. So grab your blocks. Um, I like them at the highest height, and you'll have the opportunity to change the height. So let's all start with them at the highest height um, towards 
the end of the block about or the end of your mat and then stand about two feet behind the blocks in the same direction that we just were shift the weight from foot to foot and the next time the weight shifts into the right foot lift the left leg and take a couple of swings with the left leg and the next time the left leg swings forward, pause, bend the right knee a little bit, and step the left foot forward. Bend the left knee, bring weight into the left heel. Take a couple of bends and extends here. The next time the knee bends, push evenly into both feet and inhale to sweep the arms up. Try to notice a sense of length up through the back ankle, all the way up the front of the body, and the heart peaks open at the top. Soft shoulders. And then bend the front knee a little bit more. We wanna have a lot of space for our next movement. Bring your hands to the thighs. Slowly start to release the spine over the front leg and bend the front knee as much as you need to to comfortably bring the hands to the blocks without any strain. Sway the hips from side to side. Yes, both blocks are inside the left foot. Um, so you might even need to walk the left foot over to the left so you've got space here. Sway the hips from side to side. And then push a little extra weight into the right hand. Sur uh, bend the knees, bend the, including the back knee so the back heel lifts. Circle the left hand forward, up, and back. Kind of like we did before. So you're twisting into that front leg. Take a couple of circles there to just get used to that sensation. So other way, Bob, I might have said it wrong. The right hand should be down, the left hand circling. Yeah. I know it's hard to twist that way. That's why the body was like, go the other way. It's good though. The next time the hand comes down, bring the weight into the hands and gently step the front foot back so you're at a supported plank and it should feel easier with the hands up on the blocks. It should feel like you have extra support. Bend the knees and extend a couple of times. And we're getting ready to bounce our right leg forward, but we want to use momentum. So the next time the knees bend, kick into them and step the right foot forward and see how effortlessly you can make that movement. Nice, great. And so now we're on the other side. Kick into the right heel, gently sway the hips. And if the foot didn't make it all the way forward, you can take a couple of steps. You can also come up, slide the foot forward, and come back down. Bend the front knee, shift the weight into the left hand, and now we make circles with the right hand. We'll take a couple of circles here, and you might need to bend the front knee a lot so that there's space for you to twist the body. And then set the right hand down. Push into both hands to step the foot back into plank. And then bend the knees, spring the left foot forward. And we're going to do this a few times. So now with the left foot forward, kick into the left leg, sway the hips. And if it feels like too much to be down this low, you can always bring the hands to the thigh and come up a little higher. Shift the weight into the right hand, take your circle. And then left hand down to plank, bend the knees, spring the right leg forward. Last one, sway hips, bend knees, circle the right arm, finding as much ease as possible, which might mean it's a very small circle. Right? And then the right hand lowers to the block, kick the right foot back to your plank. This time, lower the knees down, take a breath, kind of like tabletop with a neutral spine, and then gently start to um, pull the shoulder blades down so that the front of the body can lengthen. Make sure there's no tension in the low back. You can even wag the tail a little bit here. Tuck toes under, hover knees. Lift the hips a little. Take those springs that we did before. Take a couple of practice springs. And then step one foot forward. 
and then take another spring to step the other foot forward, bend the knees deeply, let the head hang with no tension in the neck. Gently sway the hips from side to side. And then your choice, with or without your hands, roll up one vertebra at a time. At the top, we'll go back to our chair sequence. Great job. You guys are moving with so much consciousness. Inhale, arms up effortlessly. Exhale, weight and heels as you send the hips back. Inhale, lengthen the whole back of the body for your forward fold. It's fine to use the blocks if that feels good. Bend the knees, exhale, slow roll up. Inhale, hands flow. You don't need to rush to get there. Exhale, chair. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, slow roll up. And pause at the top. Shift the weight into the left foot. Bring your arms down to a low V. I'll turn just so that you can see me a little better. This helps with balance. And play with picking up the right foot. Bring the sole of the right foot to the ankle. And you can always put it back down and take your time here. Squeeze the, the ankle and the foot together and see if you can lengthen all the way up. You might feel some wiggles in the foot and the ankle. This is great. Anchor the left big toe. That is the most important part. If this feels challenging, just stay here and explore this. Lower the right foot whenever you need to. If you feel steady here, play with starting to lift the right knee and then send the foot behind you and reach the arms forward just a little bit and then come back to tree. And we'll take a few of these tree Vera 3 tips and our goal is to find this perfect balance of effort and ease. So it's not about going far. It's about noticing how far you can go without creating any strain. Make sure you're breathing. And I'm going to, we have a multi-level class, so feel free to just keep playing between these two shapes. There's so much to benefit from here. Um, if that last sequence with the block went well for you, um, you're welcome to send the foot back, slowly lower the toes down at the same time that you bring your hands back to the block. Kick into the front leg, bend the knee, take your circle, and then step back to plank. If you're doing that version, spring the right leg forward, spring the left leg forward, and slowly roll up so we can prepare for the other side. So now the weight will shift into the right foot, hands down, find a steady gaze point, take a breath, play with just lifting the weight out of the left foot. As you feel safe, you can bring the left foot to the ankle gently squeezing foot and ankle together. Wobbling is fine. It's great to feel the muscles starting to engage in the foot and the ankle anchor that big toe. Stay here or start to lift the left knee preparing for our Vera 3 tip. Kick the left leg behind you as you reach the hands for just a little bit and then slowly come back to tree. And then you can keep pulsing between those shapes, releasing any sense of how far you want to go. And try to be as relaxed as possible. Take a break whenever you need to. And then if you did the sequence on the other side and you want to add it on here, you're welcome to from Vera 3, 
bring the hands down to the blocks at the same time that the left foot lowers. Kick into the right leg, giving it a little break. Gently swaying the hips. And then bend the right knee, circle right arm forward, up and back. As the right hand comes down, kick the right leg back, pausing in plank, and then bend both knees, spring the right foot forward, spring the left foot forward, release forward, and then slow roll up your own pace. Whenever you make it to the top, pause and breathe, and then just go for a little walk around your space. And even in walking, we can overdo it. See if you can find that perfect balance of how much energy can you save by walking effortlessly, like trusting your body's done this like a million times. It knows how to take a step. Yeah, it could be way more than a million or less. That was just the number that, that came. Feel free to do that math, Bob, and let me know. <laughs> and then as you continue to walk, see if you can notice your breath. And it's like the mechanism of walking continues and your awareness expands. And walk your way back to your mat. Grab one of your blocks, place it at the center of the mat, and then step in front of it. Let the feet be wider than the hips. The toes can point out just a little bit if that feels comfortable, or they can point forward if that's more comfortable. And Come on to one toe so the weight shifts into the other foot and then switch sides. And kind of like tree pose, start to feel that sense of one leg being like a pillar underneath you. See if you can avoid leaning off to the side, but instead let everything stack. Um, kind of like you're, actually I don't wanna say, that, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> For scratch that one. And if you remember when we lifted one wrist at a time, we tried to let it be as effortless as possible. Try to feel that here, how the whole body is gently peeling the ankle up, right? So the muscular effort is dispersed. There should be no tension. Bring the weight to center. Rock the weight back into the heels, but keep the big toes anchored down and start to sway your hips from side to side. If you have knee injuries, sometimes knees don't like this. So if your knees feel anything where you're not sure, you can start to go straight down. Um, but if there's no pain, this is actually really good for the knees, really good for the hips. We're slowly making our way down to our little stool behind us. And we'll meet with the hips resting on the block. And you can take your time getting there. And if that's not comfortable, the hips can come all the way to the ground. And the feet and hips can be on the floor. So I'll wait to see if this is okay for everyone. Thumbs up if this feels okay on knees and everything. Cool. Um, so take a you never thought you could use a yoga block as a seat right now. Like, you can have a seat wherever you go. It's wonderful. Um, take your hands inside of your legs and uh, give yourself permission to adjust where the legs are so that there's no, no sensation of tension in the hips or in the knees, right? So we're not trying to stretch anything. We're just trying to be in that space of effortless effort. And then extend through the arms and sit up tall so there's no strain in the shoulders as you do this. Take a breath. And as you exhale, squeeze the left thigh into the left wrist. You might notice some muscles turning on in the inside of the thigh. 
And then do the same thing on the other side. Squeeze right thigh into right wrist or wherever it lands. <laughs> Sometimes making fun of me because it's my wrists that are there. It's Roseanne's wrists too. His are like <laughs> his elbows. Whatever is touching, just <laughs> squeeze that. I have like little baby arms. <laughs> And then the next time you squeeze the left arm into the thigh, um, let the body gently rotate away and opposite arm floats. And then bring that arm down and this time let the left knee float away from the arm so you actually are engaging the muscles on the outside of the leg. So there's a little bit of um, external rotation of the hip. And then we'll do the same thing the other side. So squeeze right knee into arm. Float the left arm gently twisting away. And then come back to center and let the left knee or the right knee open a little wider so it's pulling away from the arm. And then bring it back. One more time on this side. So squeeze and twist. And then when you come back, float the left knee away from the arm. And actually, let's repeat it a few times on that same side because that feels really good. I like this movement a lot because it engages everything on the inside of the leg and then it engages everything on the outside of the leg. And the next time you come to center, switch. So it's the right side, squeezing and releasing. And then as you untwist, pause at center. And you can stay on your block as you are, or you can take a moment to experiment with a lower height or maybe no block. If you're not using a block, you don't want a sensation of sinking downwards. It should feel really buoyant, like you're a little froggy and you're ready to bounce. You can move in any direction. If you can't do that, please stay on the block because we don't want any pressure in the hips. And then without squeezing in or squeezing out, try to feel that equal sense of support rising up the inner thighs and the outer thighs to lift the pelvis and the spine. Take a breath. And then you can gently place your hands behind you, move off of the block and lower the hips down. Let the legs reach forward little bend in the knees, sway from side to side. And then start to paw. Actually, you've got options. You can paw the hands back. You can paw the hands forward. You just don't want to feel any strain in the low back. So feel free to play with both of those directions. You can start to move a little slower, a little smoother. And if it's comfortable to allow the legs to lengthen, you can, but that's not going to be accessible to everyone. So make sure you're finding that middle space of not forcing anything, not creating tension. And then Take a couple more breaths and then let's meet at center, lengthening the spine upward. If your music is still playing, you can pause it at this point. You'll need both of your blocks and both of your blankets. And we're going to do a very similar sequence to last week. So first we have to make our headrest. And so make sure your blanket is about as wide as your mat because you want to make sure your shoulders are totally supported otherwise it's a little bit hard to relax and um, the fold isn't going to be a perfect half fold because you actually want a little bit of extra space underneath the top so your shoulders are going to go here and then your head is going to go on this uneven part and then we create our headrest by rolling um, that uneven part up a little bit and then tucking the sides under. And it makes me think of a massage table. 
how you've got like the donut um, so you'll know that you've done it right if there's a so you've got the roll and then you grab the outsides and tuck the outsides under and then there's some support on the outsides and then some support for the neck I can't see what it looks like but um, and then after you create the little headrest, there should be like two or three inches below whatever you created. The other blanket will open nice and wide, wide enough that it can go across your whole belly and have like a foot on each side of you. So mine looks like this. And I like to fold it so it's just a little neater. And that can be off to the side. You don't, oh, actually, you will need it. Um, so bring your long, skinny blanket to the right side of your mat. And actually, bring your right hip onto the long, skinny blanket so your pelvis is a little off kilter. The left sit bone's down on the ground. The right is up on the blanket. Take your blocks. We'll use Satyam's new invention. One block is at the lowest height. The second block leans against it, um, and I'm going to do this from the side so you can see. So it leans against it at an angle because when we come onto our back in a moment, the legs are just going to rest on it like a shelf. For more support, create less of an angle. To come deeper into the twist, have more of an angle. So you can play with where you are with that second block. The legs will rest. We're going to move a little bit before the legs rest, but I wanted you guys to see that before you came onto the back. Um, so you've got your little block sculpture. And make your way down, placing your head into the headrest. And the, the fattest part of the headrest, the base of the headrest, will go at the base of the skull, supporting the back of the neck and the occiput where the skull meets the neck. There should be a sensation of lift and length. And if there's not, try reaching the hands underneath the headrest and doing a little extra tucking to bring more lift from that base part. And then the arms can come to a T and hover the shins parallel to the floor and start to make some big circles with the knees. And as you make these big circles, you might feel some massaging in the low back and the back of the hips, maybe even a little bit on the outer thigh. And then allow the legs to come to, for me, the blocks are on the left side, so if they're there, um, you might have to move them if they're not quite there. Mine weren't in the exact spot. And let the angle of the blocks support the legs in this gentle twist. Bring the soles of the feet down so it's um, more restorative. You do not want to feel a stretch sensation. You want it to feel very effortless. like Almost like you could sleep like this and you would wake up and there would be no weird kink. And then the blanket underneath the right hip is just creating support there so that the hip and the back can relax. So you might need an extra fold there. You can slide it in whatever, basically however high the right hip is lifted, pull the blanket underneath so that there's no effort. The gaze can be up. Or if it feels good, you can start to gently turn the gaze to the right. Adjust the right side of the blanket so you've got some support and there's no muscles working to support you. Only the blanket. And we'll rest gently on this side for few breaths.
to come out of the twist, take your left hand, gently bring the palm to the forehead so the fingertips come around to the right temple, and then gently pull the elbow to the side so the head naturally comes back to center. And then bring that hand to the outside of the left leg and gently push into the left leg to tilt the knees up to center. You'll take your blanket from the right side and place it on the belly for a moment while you swap your blocks over to the right side at whatever angle was comfortable. And then you can set up your blanket underneath your left and you might need some adjustments as you come into the twist. Start by making some circles with the knees, just massaging, moving everything around. And then as you feel ready, the knees, the feet can come down and the knees can start to tilt to the right, resting on the block at whatever angle feels really supportive. We're working at such a deep level that you don't need a dramatic physical posture. And then slide the blanket underneath the left side of the hip so that you should know. There should be a moment when you slide the blanket in where you almost feel weightless. It's like, ah, that's the goal. And then option to just gaze straight up, especially in, if you have a sensitive neck, we don't want to create any tension. Option to also gaze gently to the left and then use the headrest, build it up a little extra wherever is comfortable underneath that left side of the face. And we'll pause in this twist and Try to keep the mouth closed and breathe through the nose if that's comfortable. The tongue can come to the roof of the mouth. Swallow a couple of times, creating a suction in the mouth and the throat. And Bring all your awareness to your breath and let your physical body soften completely. I feel like when we do these poses right, it's almost like the physical body can dissolve. So if you're feeling any pain or tension, come out of it, find a gentler version. Less is more here. We'll rest here for a few moments. to exit the pose right hand to forehead fingertips come around to the temple gently tilt the nose up to the sky and then same thing with the legs tilting the knees up to the sky take the blanket from under the hip and open it so that it can rest on the belly with enough space on either side to support the forearms. And then take 
one block at a time. We'll bring the soles of the feet together and we'll gently allow the knees to open and we'll take one block at an angle under each thigh. So if you imagine um, how you had the block at an angle resting on another block, now there's a block at an angle pushing into your thigh to create a nice flat surface for the outer thigh. Again, you do not want to feel any stretch here. Um, so if it's too much, let the block come higher up on the thigh or at a steeper angle so the knees do not open as much. Let the gaze be straight up. Try tucking the chin, letting the back of the neck lengthen so the chin comes in towards the front of the neck and the crown reaches away. The hands can rest on the belly or one hand on the heart, one hand on the belly. And we'll just take a few breaths at this symmetrical restorative posture. Take a moment to check in with the low back. If the low back is arching a lot, try to let the pelvis get heavy and lengthen through the low back so there's no tension. If you're really enjoying this posture, you can stay here for extra time. You can stay here as long as you want. Um, and then when you're ready, you can bring one block underneath each leg at the back of the knee and the lowest height. And you can extend the legs out and rest in Shavasana.
Notice how effortless your breath is in this moment of deep relaxation. And resist the urge to change it in any way. And let the energy of the breath start to illuminate the body. Almost as if the breath was sending ripples of energy all the way down to the toes, out to the hands, up to the crown. Staying in this relaxed and receptive state. Take your time and consciously start to make your way from resting to seated. There's no need to rush. Think of it as a, an experiment. How relaxed can you be as you press yourself up and start to resist gravity? And hopefully our practice today has prepared us to find right effort in our most important posture and practice, our meditation seat. And with not enough effort, the mind wanders or we fall asleep but with too much effort, we create tension. Mm. Right effort is this perfectly balanced space where we are able to stay focused in the sweetest, gentlest, most expansive way possible. And let's allow the breath to lead the way. In fact, back up one step. Just notice your physical body. And often we need less effort to sit upright than we think. So if you feel any tightness in the neck or the shoulders or the back, See if you can relax a little bit and soften a little bit, saving physical energy. And then from that balanced point, observe the breath. As you relax inside, you may notice that the breath naturally lengthens. It's like there's 
a little less pressure as it comes in and as it goes out. And we'll use the natural breath mantra, hum, sa, and allow the mantra to be just as effortless as the breath. As if you don't need to do anything, the mantra is already there. And you can just listen for the effortless hum on the inhale, the effortless sa on the exhale. Start to notice the space when you've exhaled completely. And let yourself rest in that space. And the inhale will naturally arrive. It's not a holding of the breath. Just allowing yourself to be suspended in that moment of complete weightlessness. And let the inhale come to you.
I can make really gentle circles with the spine. Mm. Allow the eyes to flicker open and see if you can maintain this relaxed inner state. Bring the hands to heart center and watch your next couple of breaths connecting inner and outer worlds. Thank you so much for sharing this practice. Namaste. Take care, everybody. I'll miss you the next few weeks. We have like 90 recorded yoga classes, I think, at this point. So um, take your pick. I can recommend some if you email me. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in May, if not sooner. Um, aloha. So glad you could come today. <laughs> yes. Wonderful to see you, Tammy. Aloha. I'm just gonna try to end the recording if I can.